All right, let's quickly look at stored procedures. And I'm going to run through this fairly quickly. Um, if you have additional questions, you can always reach out to me. So stored procedure is, by definition, a segment of declarative code which is stored in the database catalog and invoked by a program later. What that means, basically, is, is it's a hunk of SQL data or SQL code that, that you're saving and working with. All right, a stored procedure is faster than uncompiled SQL. It's faster and uh, reduces traffic between the database and the application. It's reusable and transparent. What that means is people don't see the procedures occurring. They just kind of happen. Um, let's look at what a procedure looks like. So you probably notice that the, the SQL here doesn't look terribly different than the things you've done before. Um, you can see your SQL statement right here. Uh, the big difference is all this other stuff around it. So the delimiter. The delimiter is basically a way to change from our standard delimiter to something new. Our standard delimiter is a semicolon. Remember, we use the semicolon at the end of every declarative statement. Um, so at the end of select all from HSCUST, we had to have a semicolon to say that's the end of that statement. Um, the problem is with stored procedures, we need to use semicolons inside our procedure. So we have to actually change our delimiter to something different so that those semicolons don't make things stop. So we use a delimiter of a slash slash, then we give it a name. So we create a procedure and we call it get all customers. Um, then we tell it to begin. It's pretty straightforward. Our SQL goes in here. Then we end the statement and put our new delimiter there to say that it's ended. And then we change our delimiter back to what it used to be, which is a semicolon. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to bring it over here to uh, my local host. We're in home shopping. I'm going to paste this in here. So you can see what's going on. Our delimiter, then we create the procedure, get all customers, then we begin, we tell it to select from HS Cust end, and then our delimiter. So when we run this, hopefully we won't get any errors. And it says it returned an empty SQL set, which is fine. And you can see that it actually ran this. When we go looking for it, we go over here and refresh. Now we can see under Home Shopping, here we got this procedure. And we can uh, see what that looks like. And there it is. That's the stuff we actually created. Makes sense? Now to use the procedure, what we want to do is we want to call it. So we could call Make sure I'm getting that right. Get all customers. And we can see that it's all right there. So pretty straightforward. You can see how that fits together. Your procedure can be as long as it needs to be. So it might be one line of code. It could be a hundred lines of code. This is what we just did. I just didn't use the hub shopping thing. The correct way, if you're going to be really specific about it instead of just doing what I did and hoping it works, um, we'll take a look at the syntax here. You see the call, and we call the database, what we're calling, and then these brackets. And you saw that SQL is not super, super picky about those brackets, um, but, but they become important later. So here's where those brackets become important. Our store procedures can be in, out, and in, out. Now for this class, I don't want you to worry too much about the in, out, and in, out. Uh, just know that they exist. Basically, the in is the default mode, which is the only one I'm going to really show you today. And it allows you to actually pass parameters in um, so that you don't have to write them manually. So take a look at this. I'm going to copy all of this and bring it over into my SQL and show you how it runs. 
Oops. I'm clicking all over the place. All right, so take a look at what we got. Remember this is delimiter. We're changing our delimiter to the slashes. Create procedure. Get cussed by state. Now last time we just used empty brackets because we were just running a straight query. Now we're actually going to send information to the query. We actually want to be able to say, get customer by state and let me tell you what state I want you to look for. And we don't want to have to write that into every query we write. So we're going to use this in function. So you can see, just like the last one, get cussed by state in and then we need to give the variable, the parameter, a, a name. So in this case, we're going to call it state name. And we need to give it a data type. So we're going to give it a varchar 255. Then we're going to begin our SQL. And this should all look familiar. Select the last first email and state from HSCust where state equals. This is the only thing that might look a little weird to you. If you go over here and you look under HSCust, you're going to see that there is no state name, right? You've got state, but there's no such thing called state name. Well, that's because you created it right here. And you're going to tell it what state name is when you call it. So I'm going to save this. And I'll see my procedure should show up over here. Oops. If I can't get it to refresh, there's my get cussed by state. It's all in there by state name. Now to call it, let me grab the right. What I'm going to do is pull this over. Put this into my SQL. Now what am I doing? This is just like the last one, only inside the brackets now I'm doing something. In this case, I'm going to do AZ. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to give you another example here in a second. So now I'm still calling this procedure called get cussed by state. And I'm saying replace that field state name with the value AZ. Now watch what happens. It passes that AZ over to my query. And you can see that I get just things in the state of Arizona. So over here, remember my query said, select last first email state from HSCust, where state equals, and then I changed the state name to AZ when I passed it over. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Let me give you one more example here. So let's say I was to change it to VA. And again, instead of writing a whole query, I've got that, that stored procedure that asks for a state name. So I just put in my state name. And now it looks up just by Virginia. So that's stored procedures. And that's why they're useful, because they let us do that sort of thing.